بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دیر سٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ونس اگین یو آر اگین لکنگ ایٹ می ٹو ہیو اے سمری آف دا پریویس لیکچر اٹ از ویری نیسیسری ایز اٹ لنکس دا پریویس تھنگس ٹو دا کرنٹ ونس اینڈ اٹ از آلسو ریمائنڈز یو آئی نو یو آر یور میموری از ویری فاسٹ ان سم ادر ایکٹیویٹیز لائک موبائل فونز اینڈ فیس بک اینڈ ویری ساری ٹو سی بٹ ایٹ دا سیم ٹائم یو آر ناؤ آلسو اے گڈ پبلک ایڈمنسٹریٹر اینڈ یو شوڈ بی فار دس سو آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو اسٹارٹ فرام دا سمری آف دا پریویس لیکچر ویری انٹرسٹنگ ٹاپک وی ہیو اسٹارٹیڈ اف یو ریمبر وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ہول ہسٹری آف دا ڈیولیوشن پلان اینڈ وی جسٹ آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو گیو یو سم آف دا کرکس آف دیٹ ڈسکشن دیٹ وٹ ریزلٹ وی ہیو کنکلوڈیڈ فرام دیئر دا فنڈامنٹل ریزلٹ واز دیٹ دیٹ دیئر واز نیور اے ٹرو شفٹنگ آر ٹرانسفر ٹرانسفر آف اتھارٹی فرام سینٹرل ٹو دا لوکل لیول گورنمنٹ آل دو دا پروونشیل اتھارٹیز واز گیون ٹو دا لوکل باڈیز ادر وائز سینٹرل نیور سرنڈر اینی آف اٹس رائٹس ٹو دا لوکل گورنمنٹ دا ادر تھنگ از دیٹ دیٹ دا فائنینشیل لائبلٹی آر دا فائنینشیل اسپیس آر دا فائنینشیل انڈیپینڈنٹس واز ویری لو ان دیز لوکل باڈی الیکشن بٹ ایٹ دا سیم ٹائم دیئر واز گڈ تھنگ از دیٹ دا فار دا فسٹ ٹائم ان دا نیو ڈیولیوشن پلان آف مشرف دیٹ دا بیوروکریسی واز ہیلڈ ریسپانسیبل ٹو پریزینٹ دیئر رپورٹس بیفور دا الیکٹڈ ممبرس سو اٹ اٹ از اے مکسچر آف دا گڈز اینڈ بیڈز لیک لائک اینی پریویس ون اینڈ ایٹ دا بیسز آف آور ٹوٹل ڈسکشن وی وار ان اے پوزیشن ٹو گیو سم آف دا سجیشن دا فسٹ سجیشن از دیٹ دا دیٹ دا اتھارٹیز شوڈ بی شفٹیڈ ان اے ٹرو مینر اٹ شوڈ ناٹ بی ان اے سچ اے وے دیٹ آن پیپر اٹ از ٹرو بٹ ریئلٹی از دا ادر دا ادر تھنگ از دیٹ دا فائنینشیل اینڈ دا بجٹری انڈیپینڈنس از آٹ موسٹ اینڈ ایکسٹریملی امپارٹنٹ ود آؤٹ دس دا ٹرو اسپرٹ آف لوکل باڈیز الیکشن شوڈ ناٹ کین ناٹ بی اچیوڈ ایٹ دا سیم ٹائم اٹ از سجیسٹو فار دا پولیٹیکل گورنمنٹ دیٹ دے شوڈ ٹیک انیشیٹو to uh, to form the local bodies governments so that the people get their rights at the grassroots level and this uh, then this will even strengthen their roots into the people after this we just have a touch to the problem of uh, governance in pakistan that is the most critical even a child or a shopkeeper that is in the remote rural areas he will he can talk a, a he can talk a give a comprehensive talk with strong arguments that over the years the uh, governance in pakistan has been not up to the marks if you uh, talk with a person of the age more than uh, 70 or around about 80 you will see if you he will give you the total history of what happened what uh, were the consequences of this if he has some of the political uh, linkage or the political interest over the years one thing is common that this is that the police uh, problem of governance is significantly needed in pakistan because there is bad governance our national institution are running uh, in losses that we cannot afford and we are giving billions of rupees in subsidies to just survive this institution at one time this institution were giving back profits to the state but unfortunately this is not the situation right now the governor of the uh, gov and the problem of the governor is not due to uh, only one factor there are multi dimensional multi faceted uh, factors that have ultimately led towards the problem of governance and one very uh, important pa uh, topic that looks at uh, a totally 
independent of this pro uh, problem but that is the core of this problem that is the economic development because economic development looks like a pure economic uh, phenomena yet it has strong inter roots connected with the this uh, the problem of governance and we will see that how over the years the state apparatus the military and the bureaucracy ultimately dominated the political regime and thanks guards thanks to the uh, political will of the people that again the situation is reversing and the violence is uh, going down in favor of the political government and it is prayed and supposed and hoped that it this, this situation will continue and we will start from the one the first factor that is the economic growth social polarization and state power we will link these three things that at one stage there was the economic development at the same time there was social polarization it means there was some defective development it was not a comprehensive or inclusive growth that should have been and there was state power when there is a mechanism within the system the state power is also dependent upon this if this changes the things that are standing on it they also are supposed to change if uh, i remember in the previous lecture i finished with the slide that with the inception of pakistan there was a gut yod there was a milli bagat between the landlords and the industrialists uh, they were at the uh, uh, front and the military and the bureaucracy was fully supporting them both have inter interest with each other and ultimately they kept their interest alive and the nation and the populous population went behind the scene and that has to suffer so we still go on this discussion and we will discuss this phenomenon in detail because the when the people discuss the economic development they think that it is not linked with the public administration or the state uh, or the uh, 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 political science or you can say the uh, political will uh, political uh, public policy economic growth was of a kind that brought affluence to the few at the expense of the many so our if we see the economic growth over the year we can see that there was uh, enough growth or you can say the satisfactory growth over the year for example if you start from the 1950 or particularly from the 1960 of the era of ayub uh, khan there was massive growth particularly in the agriculture sector and that's continued with fluctuation over the time but what gained from the poor or you can say the uh, most deprived uh, people from this and what this means the the growth the economic development was in such a manner that the few people became more and more rich affluence at the expense of the many it is definite when there are uh, if resources are uh, uh, gathering in my pocket definitely these resources are coming from other pockets where they should be th uh, there so the can, uh, the first uh, general conclusion about the growth is that it only benefited the already rich and if we started from the landlord and the agriculturist indirectly i am saying that these two major segments were the more beneficiaries of the economic development over the 66 years of pakistan and the poor population could not get the its true uh, fruits of economic growth on average you can't say that there has been low economic growth yet it is clear that this growth could not be delivered towards the population many factors like ye kyun hua there are a number of factors that you know for this the first is the gradual erosion of social structure infrastructure the social infrastructure gradually and gradually went under erosion because there was not a specific uh, attention given or focus towards this uh, social infrastructure and over the year rather than building it up it went under erosion and deterioration and it was one of the fundamental reason that the only infrastructure was established that helped the rich people to become more rich endemic poverty the wide spread poverty was there it we can see that if we see the history of pakistan growth 
we see that the poverty has increased over uh, some period from 1962 up to 1992 or 3 there was a decline in the poverty but in real sense these are the only facts and figures but in real sense I uh, have the courage to say that the poverty remain uh, uh, endemic and it was a wide spread for this despite this is a very very huge puzzle or the complex puzzle that at the one side our growth is increasing satisfactory growth but on the other side poverty is also increasing there should have been the negative relationship between this but we have seen a very complex phenomena that the economic growth uh, went up and at the same uh, poverty went up it means there was the miss allocation of the resources imbalance of the distribution of wealth and what were this we will see uh, soon growing inequality between the regions undermined the civil society ultimately we have to dis and discuss that how the civil society was being hit by this uh, inequality or the uh, affluence of the a few people. Growing inequality between the regions undermined the civil society. Civil society is the ultimate loser on, on all of these dramas or films or movies or whatsoever for this because they do not get from this. The other achievers become more and more powerful which accelerated the trend towards militarization. The military is a power that just keeps like gazing on the power. And as it gets the opportunity, although it creates by making some of the scenario from behind the scene, but as it, cre it cre gets any of the vacuum and any of the system, uh, the, uh, the gap between this, it is a very good time for it to intervene there. It is just, it is never sleeping. It just, particularly in case of Pakistan, it has always the very, uh, you can see the greedy eyes on the uh, the authority or you can say the iktidar of sovereignty of the uh, Pakistan. And wh while the average annual growth rate of GNP fluctuated during different regimes, the overall trend of growing poverty, I have just explained this phenomena, that due to this, that the GNP, GNP and GDP, I will explain, although there is a difference between this and that, but I will be taking it as the GDP also, so I will be using it uh, interchangeably, you need not to confuse this, but keep in mind that there is a significant and huge difference between the GNP and the GDP and I am not interested to explain it here during now I am going by uh, uh, by era by era or you can say period by day during the IU period from 1958 to 69 the basic objective of the development strategy was to achieve high growth rate of GNP the IU uh, team was only concentrating on that the, the country's GDP should grow at a higher speed. They did not give attention towards the uh, equal distribution of the resources. What was their concept? It was called the trickle-down theory. They were thinking that if there is a massive investment at the higher level, ultimately it will trickle down to the, uh, its benefit will trickle down towards the uh, poor population or the grassroots level. But it it is uh, true in the sense that the people got benefit that were already rich from this. GNP growth uh, were uh, impressive at that time, but the second part of the phenomena remain unmaterialized. What was the reason for this? There was uh, many other um, factors that contributed to this one. How government tried to keep this uh, high growth rate of GNP supported by government subsidies tax concessions and import controls. So how government supported this high growth? Government just concentrated on the high growth. What was this? Government was giving subsidies to the many of the fact, uh, sectors that were contributing significantly towards the GNP or the gross domestic national product or GDP gross domestic product. The agriculture was the leading from the front. There was a green revolution. Enormous uh, agriculture development happened in that area. 
and there was tax concessions also definitely when you want to uh, uh, grow rapidly you will have to incentivize the people who want to invest if you will discourage those people they will not come into the fee, uh, scene and uh, field and they will not invest ultimately unemployment will increase and many uh, the savings rate will decrease and there will be no further investment so the government through and also government um, uh, put some control over the imports and this situation continue because the objective of the this 60 to 70 era was just focused on the higher level of uh, economic growth and that was achieved and uh, it means they were true uh, uh, they were uh, happy and they were uh, fortunate to achieve their objective but at the same time the major uh, factor wa went under the uh, scene that created polarization that is very very dangerous for the society investment targets were expected to be achieved on the basis of functional inequality un logo ko pata tha ke there is uh, increasing the income inequality but again there was a concept of the trickle down they were thinking that the investment target high massive and large investment should be there so that these target could be achieved and they uh, they were that on the basis of functional inequality they were ignoring that if for this time being there is some inequality it is not a matter of concern but at the same time there should be higher growth so we will see that what happened this meant a deliberate transfer of income from the poorer section of society when you allow the uh, the wealth to concentrate with the uh, wealthy people it means you are just keeping your eyes closed and you are allowing the flow of wealth from the poor segment of the society to the already rich people it was just ignored and it was ignored that due to the phenomena of the higher growth wo jo hai wo hukumat ka khwab pura ho gaya now we uh, see that why this was allowed because it was just if uh, in the uh, income is uh, flowing from the poor to the rich it should flow from the rich to the poor any system uh, no doubt there is problem with the system that the capitalism socialism communism islamic every system wants that there should be the flow of the wealth flow of the money from the rich people to the poor people but this was happening and the government was just keep quiet to see as an empire poor it was supposed that the poor low, low marginal rate of saving rich high high marginal rate of saving it was supposed and it was true it was supposed and it is true that the poor has low marginal rate of saving it means they save less as compared to the rich people who has higher marginal rate of saving so it was assumed it was theoretically uh, true but at the same time what happened the target was to increase total domestic saving and hence investment could be raised iska maqsad kya tha that the target was to increase total domestic saving and when there was total increase in the total domestic saving definitely ultimately and consequently there should be increase in the uh, total investment that is very uh, necessary for any of the economy However during the decades of the 60s the policy failed to significantly increase saving wo baat theoretically true thi but what happened there was not increase in the savings as it was accepted theoretically before uh, launching this policy of high growth so it uh, totally failed and there was not uh, significant or you can say a uh, boom in the saving thereby what happened obliging the government to increase its reliance on foreign aid in order to meet its ambitious growth targets definitely government had ambitious growth targets and how to achieve this first was assume that the domestic saving will plug this investment will fulfill this investment but what happened this could not be achieved and when it could not be achieved definitely the government has to see some the other third force and that was the foreign aid and from that time that was the very very dangerous time for a very critical time for us since then we are under uh, the uh, you can say the clouds of the aid or loans or whatsoever and this scenario does not seems to come uh, come seems to be end in the near near future so the government immediately went to have aid from the 
donor agencies or the donor countries. The particular growth process in Pakistan during this period generated four fundamental contradictions. If we see, now we are talking about the 60s, that during this uh, generation uh, uh, period, the economic growth uh, generated four, at least four fundamental contradictions that were not, that were not supposed to be done. And as there are contradiction, as there is uh, imbalanced uh, economic growth, there is polarization of the society, there is change in the power mechanisms, and, and there is definitely pressure on the particularly the political government. First was, what was this contradiction? A dependent economic structure and growing and flow of loans. Kya ho gaya? Hum chate kya the? What, what, uh, just to repeat the again thing, we wanted the government was very ambitious about the higher growth rate, but what happened? The growth rate uh, and it, uh, it was supposed to achieved on the basis of uh, the high saving rate. That's why it was allowed the income to flow from the poor to the rich people having supposed that they have the higher marginal rate of saving but it did, doesn't happen. So first contradiction came when there was dependent economic structure rather than the independent that was the true objective what happened and growing inflow of foreign loans. Definitely as in the previous slide we have seen that the government has to see some other sources that were the foreign loans. And what was the situation of foreign loans? I have just quoted one of the figure. The loans increased from US dollar 373 million between 50 to 55 to US 2701 million up to 1970. If we take the extreme here uh, from 55 to 70 during these 15 years from 3 to almost 9, uh, uh, nine time increase in the loans. So it was a flawed policy. The second contradiction was an acute concentration of economic power. Not the administration, uh, administrative power, an acute concentration of economic power. And look at the figures that are the eye-opener. 43 families represented 70, almost 77% of all manufacturing assets by the end of the 1960. Just the almost 77 of their was just in the hand of 43 families. So how massive there was the concentration of wealth. So this massive concentration of wealth put a very a bad consequences on the society. And the third was, what was the third contradiction of this? The polarization of classes in the rural sector and a rapid increase in the landless. Look at this, it is again a puzzle and the historical history says that there was massive agriculture growth but at the same time many people became landlessness. So how this can be justified? This is justified as we can see that the, it means the only uh, uh, big landlords got, uh, were the most beneficiary of this. So the, it created the, again the polarization of the in the rural sector. Rural sector mein kya hua? There was huge gap between the haves and have not. The, the, the big landlords became uh, more uh, rich and they, they bought back the the uh, lands from the poor people and the poor, poor people became landless. So the agriculture, the green evolution again could not deliver to the poor. For example, what happened? Income of the rural elite increased sharply. Rural elite means that the people that were the big landlords, not like you and me people. Hopefully you may be, but I am sure I am not the uh, rural elite, although I have a background from the rural. In green revolution, the real incomes of the rural population declines in absolute terms. Absolutely difficult to explain. Everything is going well in the agriculture sector. It is growing and the 
incomes of uh, elite people are increasing but at the same time the real incomes of the rural poor declined in absolute form so it is also one of the source or the contradiction of the this economic development phenomena that there was imbalances there was higher uh, gaps between haves and have not and ultimately what happened we will see that one at one stage these uh, haves and have nots were standing in front of each other similarly during 1960s as many as small farmers became landless laborer look at the number this is not a small number this is 7794042 so in this in these 10 years the people who became laborer from the land uh, from the land owners was such a high it means there was a hammering or the policy was so biased uh, negatively biased to the rural poor people that they have to quit and they were the more sufferer of this and was was the last contradiction of this economic disparity between the regions of pakistan increased significantly economic disparity between the uh, regions of pakistan many a uh, big disparity particularly the southern punjab and the eastern punjab there was huge uh, uh, the this kind of uh, uh, disparity rural particularly rather than saying this rural or urban divide was there huge rural and urban divide that we will see these were four major contradiction that were uh, in, in total contrast of the previously uh, do, uh, documented the theory that was the uh, high growth these consequences of the economic growth process during the u period generated explosive political tensions we are not talking about the history or the ram kahani of this or that we want to link it that how there was the polarization how tension created how military had the uh, uh, way to come in and how the bureaucracy enjoyed the Uh, the whole history of pakistan so what this happened as you have seen the very uh, alarming uh, figures or astonishing figures surprising figures that there was huge difference between haves and have not and it was kept deliberately just keeping there was the economist i think at that time they may be true that were giving the, the philosophy that we should invest in the heavy uh and make heavy investment at higher level and there will be trickle down that ultimately not happen so what happened there was generated explosive political tension these tensions started right uh, in the before 70s and what was the consequences hold your hand uh, hold your head heart and see what was which not only overthrew the ayub government this is not the alarming bringing jaya khan's marshala but it in uh, uh, but also fueled the uh, the secessionist movement in east pakistan which ultimately resulted in the form formation of bangladesh ye hote hain consequences jab aapki economic development now i think you have understood that the economic development is a fundamental tool if you want to keep the people quiet and happy peacefully you will have to deliver across the board equally if you will not do, uh, do this i think the, the 90% reason behind the uh, fall of dhaka in my opinion is the uh, uh, is the imbalance between the economic development between east pakistan and the west pakistan every have uh, most heavy uh, machineries were in the west pakistan and we treated those people that they are not uh, they were not given i think indirectly the true status of a pakistani that part was seen as a you can say the inferior part of the pakistan at the same time the ayub khan has to pay his price of his policies when there was huge explosive political tension it was a time was bhutto to emerge on the scene of the pakistani political landscape that was unique in the sense that he was the only man who uh, led from the front and had the ability to take to the nation to the heights that the nature did not allow him i don't know what was that the what was his, uh, his ambition and who were the powerful hands that allow the military to hang such a popular uh, prime minister 
what happened is after this the ayub ajaya khan's martial law came and the most significant was the fall of dhaka that is the creation of bangladesh economic growth and social uh, uh, economic growth and social polarization topic continues during the bhutto period economic growth slowed down sharply it is very interesting the people are very fond of bhutto and they uh, he has a very you can say deep uh, roots in the in all particularly the poor people but at the same time economically we, we see that in his era from 1972 to 1977 in the five or six year the economic growth was too slow many reason behind this that there was new pakistan he was just going through a, a, a the fa a new phase but the, whatever the reason was we have to see that how the economic growth went in this way and that was a very very slow economic growth in this industrial growth and look at some of the figure industrial growth fell from an average of 13% it mean before the uh, assuming uh, charge of the bhutto the Uh, industrial growth was 13 percent mess. That is uh, the massive growth during the 60s to only 3 percent during the period. It means there was 75 percent decline in the in the industrial uh, growth. That's why the industrialists are always against the Bhutto uh, phenomena. Are the Bhutto ideology? However, we are now looking through the figures that are speaking. This can speak loudly. We can't ignore. Despite many of his charismatic qualities, he was poor in performing the economic development for this. At the same time, what happened? Nationalization of banks and credit expansion for financing loans to capitalist farmers and industrialists. led to heavy deficit and increase in the money supply what happened in the one of the major drawback of the bhutto regime is that the inflation why this inflation occurred many reason behind this but two or three are the biggest one is the when the nationalization of banks came and the government politically gave cred, uh, credits to the uh, big landlords capitalist farmers and the industrialist for that the government ha uh, have to face or you can say led to heavy deficits and increase in the money supply how the government started to fulfill these deficit they just concentrated on uh, keeping the money supply and it is a very basic phenomena for an economic student that as there is money increase in the money supply ceteris paribus there is increase in the inflation and one of the uh, major cause of the fall of bhutto regime was the inflation the political or the opposition parties uh, exploited this fact uh, enormously and ultimately the military uh, was able to uh, send bhutto out of the Uh, uh, role. Although nationalization of industries enabled the PP to acquire the, acquire the support of a section of the people, licenses, jobs, loan. PP ne bhi apna bhutto saab ne bhi ye jo hai wo apna kam kia. Nation when there was a nationalization, when these banks were making some of the not uh, you can say not properly delivering the funds to the. a uh, different segment of the society this nationalization of industries give P, uh, pp to uh, get uh, more power and acquire the support of a section of them. pp ne kya isme kiya license uh, logon ko jari kiye the jobs were given loans were also uh, uh, provided to the people so it was a indirectly a way to attract the voters for the next election yet the lower middle class that did not gain from the pp suffered an absolute decline in their real income ye sari loot mar kahan ho rahi thi it was just at higher level that there was nationalization the people were getting some of the jobs loans licensing or whatsoever the lower middle class was not getting benefit from this so he has to suffered owing to the high inflation rate inflation to us wajah se aa gaya definitely when there was flow of uh, high flow of uh, credit by printing of money it has ultimate effect on the money uh, on the inflation rate so the lower middle class was more affected from this aspects of bhutto economic growth and social phenomena still continues 
it was his frustrated section that it was his frustrated that responded to the call for street agitation in March 1977. That was the movement uh, Pakistan National Alliance (PNA), very big alliance in the history of Pakistan, that overthrew the most popular prime minister. So, what was the reason behind this? The the previous this inflation. It was one of the reasons that the people joined the agitation against Bhutto and they were true in the sense because their real income was decreasing as the inflation was increasing at a very higher speed. If we see some of the figures that what was the rates of some of the things before the start of Bhutto regime and after that there is a massive increase and definitely the Bhutto has to pay the price for this. Although the apparent form of the street agitation was spontaneous, it's clear that you have a few issues. And the major reason was this: that was the economic reason. However, one hidden reason was that the Ziaulak at that time, who was very clever and cunning in formulating, he was behaving in a such way that he was uh, also uh, showing Bhutto that he is faithful to him, and at the same time, he was very popular among the. Uh, opposition parties, Pakistan National uh, Alliance. It was orchestrated and given political focus at key junctures of the movement. In this case, you have a political focus, you have a Milta Gaya. National parties, ko, uh, zia, uh, opposition parties were promised by Zia informally that they will get the uh, the pa power when the Bhutto will be out of the power, definitely they will be given the uh, share into the power. But unfortunately, that didn't happen, and Zia overwhelmingly and like a single man uh, uh, ruled this country like a king for the 11 years. This organizational and coordination function was performed by trained cadres uh, of the Jamaat Islami. Allegedly with support from the U.S. ये सारा drama जो इतने बड़े-बड़े आप जो सामने आ रहे थे बुटों के, the जमाते इस्लामी was also at the forefront of this. The Mufti, the Mufti Mahmud and the the Maulana Maududi and the other people, they were at the forefront of this situation. And how they were supported? They were the United States. And now you can see that the every time. Yeah, Jamaat e Islami makes slogan against the United States. So at that time they were being supported because the United States was extremely against the Bhutto because the Henry Kissinger on publicly said that they will make the Bhutto a, a symbol of uh, 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 horror for the uh, other people. Makame ibrat bana dege, and he wa, uh, and uh, they were true in their sense that using the military, using the Jamaat e Islami, using uh, many other forces, they were ultimately in a position to hang the photo. The agitation was of, of course fueled by the fact that the PP was alleged to have rigged election in a number of constitutions. This is 100% correct. No doubt the Bhutto tried to uh, rig the polls, which you call the Jurlu, which the Jurlu tried to rig the polls in some of the constituencies. But it was not uh, such a situation that there should be huge agitation against it. The problem could be solved by negotiation. And I, if I am true, at the 11th hour, Bhutto was ready to negotiate with the opposition party. But at that time, Zia has finalized his pro uh, uh, program to take over. And that was not materialized. Bhutto became uh, agree, uh, agree to have uh, negotiation and there I remember there were some of the negotiation talks that were ultimately not uh, succeeded and Bhutto was even ready to uh, to dissolve the assembly and to go into the re-election. But ultimately in, uh, you can see in many of the factors whenever there is a negotiation between the Taliban or the other uh, Taliban or these the uh, the government or the India and Pakistan, there are some hidden forces that do not allow this to uh, happen. So when uh, until and unless those hidden forces are powerful, the situation will remain the same. The overthrow of the Bhutto regime represented the limits of populism within a state structure dominated the uh, military and the bureaucracy. Bhutto's 
uh, over through uh, removal from the scene was a significant message from the military and the bureaucracy that who is the real power, uh, powerful a stakeholder in Pakistan whether it is the whether it is the public or it is the military and definitely it was decided no public although the public was on the back and call of the Zul Zulfikar Ali Bhutto but ultimately Zia's brut brutalities played havoc with the nation many uh, dist that created many distortions in the society but however it was one of the major and significant and clear signals to the masses that the ultimate power lies with the military the end the, uh, or the bureaucracy now we start another topic that is the fragment and uh, fragmentation of civil society economic growth you have homeless may you have curly अभी इसका जो है वो पहला हमने पार्ट कंप्लीट किया वट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ गवर्नेंस इन पाकिस्तान द पीपल एंड द मिलिट्री ब्यूरोसी एंड द पीपल सो वी हैव जस्ट सीन वन ऑफ द फैक्टर दैट वॉज द इकनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड सोशल पोलराइजेशन एंड नो वी आर गोइंग इन टू द सेकेंड फेज दैट इज द फ्रेगमेंटेशन ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटी कि जो जो यकजान सोसाइटी थी हाउ इट की इन सो फ्रेगमेंट आर पोलराइज over the year each regime that came into power sought to legitimate itself through the an explicit idea each regime definitely each regime have different uh, power or you can say different method uh, ideologies to legitimate their uh, rulership or their rule over the country what from uh, uh, the first one you propounded the ideology of modernization and economic development what was his idea that there should be economic development and there should be the modernization so this was his legitimacy to just uh, prolong his rule the bhutto regime sought legitimacy in the ideology of food culture uh, clothing and shelter for all bhutto ka ye naira sab log jante hain ki roti kapda aur makan and that gained much popularity among the people although he could not pro, uh, um, fulfill his promise but at the same time the naira was the slogan was very basic and the he was committed to provide uh, these shelter and he had the potential but unfortunately he could not survive to the uh, to fulfill his end and i am not sure whether he was alive he should have done then although i can see with the confidence that he has the potential but still there are so many factor that uh, even a person sitting on a seat we can say that he is a potential honest and sincere person but we can see that he can deliver over time what was the zia's methodology zia initially sought justification of his government precisely in te uh, temporary uh, character 90 days zia was very simple he said okay in 90 days we will uh, conduct the election jo hai wo iktidar awam ke numaindon ke hawale jo hai wo kar diya jayega just he made promise of 90 days but he it these 90 day, days went even more than the 9 years and the pakistani people uh, have to play, uh, see this the fragmentation of the society topics continues it was this fear that impelled the impelled him to hang the bhutto the zia was very fear from bhutto and there was on the publicly there are statements from the bhutto that what uh, Uh, surely against the military and he was challenging the or you can say uh, uh, calling for the competition to the military and definitely military has the uh, background support from the many of the opposition party jamaat islami uh, pna and the uh, us also so definitely bhutto could not uh, find this position he could not guess the idea no doubt he was true that when he was going into the public meetings there was a massive crowds that used to come to see uh, listen bhutto but at the same time the real power still lies with the army that bhutto could not fight he, and that's why he has to uh, sacrifice his life it was the same fear that subsequently induced zia to rule on the basis of military terror जिया ने नब्बे दिन के बाद ये क्या किया कि उसने ये क्या किया कि मिलिट्री टेरर इस तरह फैला दी जाए 
کہ کوئی بات جو ہے وہ نہ کرے یو کانٹ امیجن آئی ایم شور یو آر دا یو ہیو دا برتھ ان ناٹ لیٹر دا ایم بفور دین دا ایٹی فائیو بٹ یو کانٹ امیجن وٹ واز ہاریبل سین آف دیٹ دیٹ پیریڈ اینڈ آئی ہیو فارچونیٹلی آئی ہیو مائی چائلڈ ہڈ آف دیٹ ایرا ان نائنٹین ایٹی ایٹ آئی واز اباؤٹ ففٹین اور سکسٹین ایئرس اینڈ یو آر ڈیفینیٹلی آئی تھنک یو آر ناٹ بارن ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم so this was a very very you can say the uh, the closed era nothing was clear every person was fa- uh, feeling fear threatening uh, other the uh, the uh, this uh, um, malvalization malvi you have culture religionization it was on the peak there was ethnic crisis many things were hero and clash and coup culture the uh, afghan refugees uh, kidnapping the childs from different part of the pakistan so nothing was clear about this but zia was sitting like a king and he was dominating the pep- uh, the people at the higher level he has the umbrella but under the deterioration of the society was so that though the people were fear for, uh, uh, from the bu- brutalities and injustices of the ar- uh, army that played with the uh, uh, with its nation and uh, nation of pakistan ultimately they ended in while propounding a version of islamic ideology isla uh, zianik or lobada jo hai wo bada dilchasp hoda he said that he want to uh, bring islamic ideology islamic system to the pakistan and i remember his referendum in which only the one question was that whether you want islamization in pakistan or not and when there was a massive majority in the favor or definitely in a muslim country that they want the islamization so they said okay it means you are electing me that i am going to uh, uh, start the islamic ideology and this was a very very Uh, a compl- complex system of this he tried this uh, his motives were other his vested interest were other but he he threw the country into the fire that is still uh, you can say and uh, the fire uh, it is still uh, alive and you can see in different occasion like in rawalpindi just a few days back on the muharram ul haram what happened these have all roots uh, linked towards the uh, this islamic ideology that was so called islamic ideology not the true ideology islamic has the tolerance message all over the world islam doesn't allow for this it asks the to respect the uh, the rights of the other and even sacrifice your uh, uh, obligations but this was the so called uh, so called ideology imposed by zaul haq draconian measures of military courts the pp leaders and the pp uh, supporters has to gone through a very very critical role and they were uh, unhe kode jo hai wo mare gaye unko na qabil yaqeen jo hai wo di gayi sazaye di gayi and arbitrary arrest even when there was he was in the uh, he wanted to they have wanted to terrorize the people by the military and the people used to said i remember i have some of the uh, you can say the ایکو دا باز گشت میرے کانوں میں جو ہے وہ آ رہی ہے دین پیپل یوز ٹو وین وی یوز ٹو پلے سم ان اوپن ایریا پیپل یوز ٹو پلے دیٹ دا آرمی ویل کم اینڈ پیک یو اپ دس آئی ریمبر ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم سو دیر واز سو ہار ایٹ دیٹ وتھ داؤٹ اینی ریزن دا آرمی واز الاؤڈ ٹو پک دا پیپل اینڈ دیٹ واز دا آربیٹریری ارسٹ اینڈ موسٹ آف دا ٹائم دیز واز نائنٹی نائن پرسینٹ دیز واز دا ارسٹ آف دا پیپل ہو یوز ٹو اسپیک اگینسٹ دا زیا اینڈ ڈیفینیٹلی دوز واز دا پیپل فرام پاکستان پیپل پارٹی اینڈ پبلک لیشنگ وار انٹروڈیوسڈ سریام کوڑے جو ہے وہ مارے جاتے ضیاء وا وا کروانے کے جو ہے وہ بڑے موڈ میں ہوتے تھے جو ہے وہ انہوں نے جو ہے آئی ریمبر دیٹ ان ون آف دا گینگ ریپس ان فیصل آباد ہی پبلکلی آسک دا پیپل کہ ان کو جو ہے وہ کوڑے مارے جائیں اینڈ دیٹس وائی دا پیپل وار سو امپریسڈ بائی دیٹ بٹ اندرونی خانہ جو وہ کر رہا تھا جسٹ وی ول سی دیٹ ہاؤ دا فریگمنٹیشن آف دا سول سوسائٹی ہیز ٹو گو تھرو ڈیورنگ دا ریجیم آف مسٹر ضیاء دس دا گریجویل روشن یہ اوپر سے کام چلتا رہا لاوا اندر ہی اندر پکتا رہا جب آپ کسی کو فورسفلی دباؤں گے ایون آئی فورسفلی سپریس یو آر یو سپریس می فار فار دا ٹائم بینگ آئی مے بی 
यू कैन से डिप्रेस नॉट डिप्रेस बट अल्टीमेटली आई विल बाउंस बैक एंड देर विल बी मैसेव एक्सप्लोजिव फॉर दिस एक्सप्लोजन फॉर दिस दस द ग्रेजुअल रिजन ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटी ब्राट द पावर ऑफ द स्टेट इन टू कंफ्रटेशन विद द पीपल हुआ क्या फिर ये जो है वो उसका सारी डिस्कशन का नचोड़ और क्रक्स ये है कि इसमें फिर हुआ क्या कि अल्टीमेटली कौन साम आमने सामने आ गया द सिविल सोसाइटी ब्राट द पावर ऑफ द स्टेट इन टू कन्फ्रटेशन विद द पीपल लोग आमने सामने आ गए जो है वो इस जो है वो जुल्म के खिलाफ लोगों ने जो है आवाज़ जो है वो उठानी शुरू की सो दैट्स वाई दिस वॉज द ह्यूज पोलराइजेशन जस्ट हैव वन फर्दर लुक एट वट हैपन देर अर्लियर इन सेवेंटी वन दिस कन्फ्रटेशन हैड बिन ए मेजर फैक्टर इन द ब्रेक ऑफ पाक पाकिस्तान हम तजर्बात से नहीं सीखते every time we make new experiment and the new experiment that is being uh, played in the uh, balochistan that the missing person and the kill, uh, target killing and the uh, uh, bullet riddled, bod riddled bodies of the baloch and the uh, the killing of the nawab akbar bugti these are some of the less we should learn lesson from in the these and ultimately we will have to face when we uh, the akbar bugti was killed there is a significant fragmentation of the society and when the society and the state becomes amne uh, samne aate hain then there is havoc and every should uh, be fair from that time and we hope that this time never comes uh, in the history of pakistan again it only happened in the 1971 when there was half of the portion of this uh, uh, the largest islamic state of pakistan was broken into two uh, the parts now a protracted period of martial law under the zia regime served to brutalize and undermine civil society civil society ki to usne khal utar di सिविल सोसाइटी को जो है वो मजहब के नाम पर उसको जो है वो और नाम अखलाक याद ये सो कॉल्ड आई डोंट से दैट देयर शुड नॉट बी द इस्लामिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ दिस बट देट वाज नॉट द टू टू ट्रू कंसेप्ट इट वाज द जस्ट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ मिस्टर जिया हू वाज द मिलिट्री डिक्टेटर एंड ही जस्ट टेक दिस स्पोर्ट टू जस्ट प्रोलॉन्ग हिज इज रिजीम as the zia regime militarized militarized the structure its isolation from the people was met by its acute external dependence logon se to military cut gayi logon ka to ab tak lagi koi nahi raha lagta aise ta there were two different state is different people are different at that time everyone claiming against and even if i speak any word against the military at that time i would have been in the missing person and not sitting here before you uh, giving the lecture and uh, taking giving you the very interesting story that what happened and what we have seen and we never expect this what is happening in uh, kpk and nw and the balochistan it is not, it is you are taking it very easy it, but it is very serious it is just to break it of our body into and balochistan is our the significant economically the most powerful part of pakistan is the balochistan jab zia sahab idhar se kat gaya then there was definitely jab aadmi akela ho jaye apne chhod jaye definitely he has to depend on some other way that are the foreigner or the external forces external forces bhi usi ummeed mein rehti hain definitely many of the external forces as direct Uh, their stakes in the in pakistan so they were in a position to just intervene they were looking and as they uh, looked here and there to get help from there they were there to help him out in the absence of domestic political popularity koi uski zia ki base to nahi hai aaj zia sahab aa jaye ek union council ka election it is very difficult for him to win the election but on the same time if bhutto and the opposition party comes you can imagine what will happen i need not to don't think that i am always supporter of the pp i am always supporter of the democratic government i am supporter of the nawaz sharif i am supporter of the gilani i am supporter of the zia i am uh, supporter of all other uh, prime minister that are elected from the Uh, uh, people otherwise any multi dictator even he revolutionize the pakistan he has no right to rule this country his only right is to defend the country we pay from their uh, by cutting our own bellies we pay them and there uh, they if they are so 
uh, uh, popular in the nation they should quit their jobs they should go into the election and we will see that how much they are uh, 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 popular in the nation now you can see the other military dictator that is under the trial nowadays if general musharraf i can't think uh, that he can win any seat in all over the pakistan if there is the comp his competition is with the uh, imran khan nawaz sharif or any a say uh, any a high rank pp leader so this is um, the story of this that the, what i want to uh, suppose that the militarization of the uh, politics uh, politics has uh, caused pakistan too much it's a political economic and military support from the united states zia or united state jo hai wo bahut kareebi jo hai wo dost the and he used to make proud of this at the same time logon ko ye wo kehte the zia sahab कि हम डॉलर जो है वो लेते हैं बिकॉज इन 1979 व्हेन द सोवियत यूनियन इनवेडेड अफगानिस्तान वी वर ऑन द फ्रंट लाइन ऑफ द फ्रंट लाइन टू फाइट अगेंस्ट देम ऑन द विद द डॉलर्स ऑफ द यूनाइटेड स्टेट सो जिया गाट बिकॉज अकेले हो गए थे जिया साहब पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमिक एंड मिलिट्री सपोर्ट फ्राम द यूनाइटेड स्टेट दिस पोस्ट पाकिस्तान इन बिकमिंग ए फ्रंट लाइन state in america's afghan war which further undermined the civil society civil society billion ki tarah dekhti rahi hai 66 year mein decision kahin hote rahe koi jo hai wo uska jo hai wo hal jo hai wo nahi nikla civil society the most sufferer are you and me that are the civil society the desh the bandar baant upar hoti rahi jo hai wo idhar udhar roti khate rahe billion bechari jo hai wo dekhti jo hai rakhe billion means the civil society at that time jab zia got help from different okay uh, fronts political economic and military support from the united state definitely it pushed us as a front line ab bhi hamare paas zai hua hai when there was america invaded the afghanistan we again came in the war or terror we were the front line and we have paid a massive and uh, massive price of this and that cannot be imagined if i use to calculate on the social economic uh, as cultural uh, religion cost i can't remember there are so many casualties bomb blast there is no guarantee that at any time where there is a bomb blast so this is all the fruits of our wrong policies particularly on the be uh, uh, on the parts of our military rulers between 77 and 87 this is the zaira with the steady inflow into pakistan of of afghan refugees more than 25 lakh afghan refugees entered in pakistan in 1979 when there was the uh, soviet union invaded the Afghanistan no doubt that were the muslim countries but all over the world when there are refugees they are kept under uh, in the camps rather than they are allowing to be the part of the uh, the other country no doubt we have a very very strong and deep terms with the himalayan nations of the afghans and they are our uh, they were our best friend but at the same time it was not the policy zia did this because zia knew that many of the these refugees will ultimately become the source and the terrorism instrument for them and ultimately that was proved and so they were allowed to run uh, havoc in all parts of the country now look at the karachi there is this phenomena you can see the history of the kidnapping of the child this phenomena also exists there so this is going in one way of the other it is not getting to the end so 25 lakh people uh, influx of the people into the country without any of the registration this is unique in the history of uh, any country two trends have emerged to fuel the crisis of civil society civil society ke jo hai wo two jo hai wo isme jo hai wo isme jo hai crisis aaye we will discuss this the, what were the these crises we will discuss this that the illegal uh, armed market aaye mafia heroin mafia aaya jisne hamare sath jo kiya wo khuda ki pana and uh, we uh, then i will start from further and we uh, the topic will going uh, the discussion will go on on the fragmentation of the so civil society it's time for me to give you brief summary and say you good uh, by for the uh, till the next lecture 
So from where we started, we started that the why there was the polarization of the society. Polarization of the society means that how the state apparatus came dominant over the uh, political system. And it has a very, very long history. Hey, from different, the, we just have seen a one look of this, that is the economic growth. Economic growth looks entirely different from other phenomena, but it is extremely and strongly linked with the, uh, this, the polarization of the civil society over time. So what uh, starting from the Ayub era, they were just concentrating on the high investment, uh, the heavy investment, they were ignoring the uh, distribution of the wealth and the, uh, and the fruits of this investment. Although the growth were going well, the, it was not being delivered to the poor population. There was huge gap between the rural and the urban and ultimately there was the massive explosion of this. After this, uh, the Bhutto regime came that was also very uh, poor from the economic development. Many other reasons were for this and ultimately Ultimately, he has to face the crisis. There was high inflation, high uh, polarization of the society, high agitation, and there was the people against the, uh, the Bhutto, and he has to do, uh, pay this price. Then there came that period havoc for the country and on different uh, uh, fronts that we uh, keep on discussing over time. One of the majors are two that the influx of so many people. He uh, deliberate, deliberately tried to make own paper horror by militarization. So this came and the and they just suppressed uh, and the nation uh, by this terror and ultimately what happened there was alienation between the state and the people people were thinking themselves something different from the state and what this led to the there was the confrontation between the state and the civil society that is still going on we uh, so to uh, continue this zia's uh, 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 Zia's impacts on our civil society and public administration and public policy. Uh, uh, wait for the next lecture. I think you, uh, I hope you will be hoping uh, anxiously for the next lecture because I am showing you the uh, mirror of our history and the dictator. So uh, take care. Goodbye. Allah Hafiz.